Welcome to the UK Investor Magazine podcast, the latest on shares, markets and investments, now available on your Amazon Alexa. Hello and welcome to the UK Investor Magazine podcast, now also available on the UK Investor Magazine mobile app. For today's podcast, we're going to be taking a deep dive into Aquis listed Majestic Corporation. We're going to be looking at their recent numbers. They produce sterling results for 2024. We're going to be looking through the numbers and the key drivers of metrics there. And we're also going to be drilling down into the business model and looking at the key business model behind those numbers. And to do that, we're very kindly joined today by Crystal Lai, who is the head of communications at Majestic Corporation. Crystal, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. So before we get into it, uh, Crystal, we're going to be looking through the numbers, as I said, and we're going to be drilling down into the business model. First of all, could you give us a brief introduction, first of all, to yourself, as well as Majestic Corporation, please? So my name's Crystal. I'm the head of communications at Majestic Corporation. And Majestic Corporation is a recycling company that was founded in 2018 and listed on the Aqua Stock Exchange in 2022. And what our recycling company does is effectively help enable today's circular economy. Now, what I mean by that is that all of the devices, equipment, infrastructure, uh, gadgets that power our everyday lives and society, I'm talking critical components like semiconductor chips, printed circuit boards, batteries, they require a very sophisticated supply chain and materials in order to be brought to life. Now, that material can be sourced in two ways. One is through traditional mining and the other is through recycling, which is using what already exists in our world through discarded end-of-life products, extracting that material, processing it, and then re-injecting it back into our supply chain And that's where Majestic comes in. So 2024, and we'll get into this later, um, but 2024, we saw top line revenue increase 67% to 49.3 million and profits increase 1.9% to 1.7 million. We also have a heap of announcements in the pipeline that we're very excited for. Yeah, so I'm going to be drilling down into those numbers in more detail. So let's focus on the business model now, if we may, uh, Crystal. So... You mentioned there that the supply chain. So I'm going to ask this question in the context of of the supply chain. Please, could you run through Majestic's business model, where you operate specifically and where you fit into that uh, critical minerals and metals recycling supply chain, please? Yeah, so our network, which includes affiliates and subsidiaries, span eight countries, including uh, Malaysia, UK, US, uh, Italy, Hong Kong. And simply put, our business model is built around working with suppliers to source discarded and end of life products, processing it, and then working with customers who consist of refineries, OEMs, to move it back into industrial use, back into our supply chain. It's a model that's been built over decades. Our founding team have spent in the industry on both the supplier and customer side. And some of this material that we're sent, we take over early on in the processing value chain, some later, and then from there, we put it through our global end-to-end processing network to get it compliant, to get it customer ready. Um, And then there is other material that moves through a handful of vetted contracted suppliers under our management to our customers. So in essence, we make money through selling processed material or managing the transaction. Thank you. And we're actually going to discuss some of those materials in more detail to give listeners a flavour of of the types of materials and the inputs uh, that you're dealing with. But before we do that, Crystal, can we look at the the opportunity? Because I think it's good for listeners to set the scene in terms of the market that Majestic are are operating. How how big is the opportunity in recycling waste, e-waste, renewable waste, chipboards, in numbers, if you have any numbers there, how's that set to develop over time? And why is it so important that the world starts to increase the volume of waste that they recycle each year at this point in time? 
Yeah, Jonathan, it's it's massive. The global opportunity in recoverable material materials is huge. Every year, tens of millions of tons of high value metal waste. I'm talking um, industrial equipment, electronics, appliances are discarded. In 2022, it was 62 million tons of this sort of material reaching our uh, global waste streams, and this number is expected to reach 82 million tonnes by 2030. The sad reality is only a fraction of it is properly recovered and reused. The thing is though, for many businesses and all economies, it's not just a sustainability problem, it's also about resource security and protecting our supply chains, especially in a increasingly nationalist world. So where Majestic fits in this opportunity landscape is we're on track to recycle 100,000 tonnes per year by 2030, making us a key node in how metal flows in the global economy. Thank you. So we've been discussing metals and types of waste, uh, Crystal. I think it'd be good now if we actually uh, went a layer deeper and looked at the specific types of, of waste. You, you mentioned circuit boards uh, at the beginning, but I understand that you uh, recycle a plethora of e-waste and different types of waste. So if you could give us some more details on those inputs, that'd be fantastic, please. Yeah, so it, it's uh, circuit boards, which, which you mentioned, but it's specifically the metals within that. So we we handle five key categories. Stainless steel metals, which includes nickel, steel, chrome, uh, battery metals, which includes copper, graphene, aluminium, solar metals, which includes silicon and silver, precious metals, which includes gold, silver and palladium, and base metals, which includes you know zinc and brass. Now let's drill down into the numbers, Crystal, because you, you put out full year results very recently. They were very strong. As you mentioned at the beginning, 67% increase in revenue. What was the key driver behind that? Yeah, so in 2024, revenue increased 67% to 49.3 million because we expanded into the solar and battery segments where demand has continued to grow. Um, we also expanded partnerships with suppliers, increasing our trade volumes. Um, one notable supplier being a UK recycler, Telecycle, which Majestic has now formally acquired. That trade volume contributed to 2024's growth and going forward, it'll become Majestic's revenue as well. Perfect. Thank you. So looking at the numbers here, looking at the results that you recently put out, we saw a very big jump in, in revenue, 67% uh, percent increase. But looking at uh, the profit before tax, we, we saw a more modest increase of, of 1.9%. You know, what, what's at play there? What, you know, what's happening and how do you see this developing over time in terms of that revenue filtering down to the bottom line? 2024's profits rose 1.9% to just over 1 million and this was expected. We made deliberate investments into new segments, which I mentioned earlier, and it came with costs from procurement to marketing, to operations. Uh, we also made a strategic acquisition, like I mentioned, and we're also heavily investing in R&D on proprietary processing solutions to extract more value from the same material inputs, which will really just help our future bottom line. It's important to note that our profits have still increased despite these numerous investments. So our expectation is that these moves will bode very well into the future. So very much building a base for future growth in, in 2024 with those uh, right. investments. Yeah, exactly. So one, one of the, the, the interesting things that, that I've noted and, and you've mentioned today is Majestic is expanding heavily in the UK. You made the acquisition of Telecycle. You very recently put out an announcement for plans for a new facility in Wrexham. From my understanding, that's going to be uh, a 50,000 square foot facility compared to the, to the 4,000 square foot facility you have at the moment. So that's a massively bigger facility there. So you're really allocating resources to the UK. Why do you see the UK as such an attractive market? So the UK offers a powerful mix of scale, regulation and momentum. Its metal recycling industry is worth nearly 40 billion and it's expected to grow exponentially in the company in the coming years. That growth is being driven by variables like 
growing EV adoption, tightening recycling regulations and pressure to secure and protect domestic critical metals at a time where, you know, not many people know this, but the UK has no significant local mining base. And so government programs are backing infrastructures to keep that material in the country, not exported. So for us, this is a high alignment market with um, long term policy and commercial tailwinds. Thank you. And you mentioned, Crystal, that you have a number of exciting announcements uh, coming up, and I'm sure we'll have you back on the podcast before long to discuss those. But to finish off now, you know, for investors that are potentially looking at Majestic, what would you say, in summary, are the biggest opportunities for Majestic in the year ahead? Yeah, so we do have a heap of exciting announcements in the pipeline, and I can't reveal too much at the moment. When I can, I'll, I'll be back here. Um but we have just announced the planned launch of a new 50,000 square foot facility in Wales. Just for some perspective, we've been able to achieve our progress in the European markets with a 4,000 square foot one. So this move will just dramatically increase the amount of waste we can handle, getting us closer to that 100,000 tonnes per year target by 2030 and cementing ourselves as that critical node in the European and global um, markets. Thank you. Thank you very much, Crystal. And just as a note to listeners, do check out the notes to this podcast because there'll be a link through to Majestic Corporation's website. Do check it out. You'll get a a flavour for the company and what they're doing. So, Crystal, thank you very much for being on the podcast today. Thank you for having me, Jonathan. And thank you very much to everyone for listening. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed listening to the UK Investor Magazine podcast. Please do share the podcast and we really value any reviews and comments you leave us in your chosen podcast player. The views presented by the hosts and guests of the UK Investor Magazine podcast are in no way investment advice. And please remember all investment involves risk.